This playthrough is rated M for Mature. With the galaxy behind me, you know that I am God. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, we're back here with another episode of Mass Effect. In the last episode, we went to a... Was it Eternia? Or, let me double check really quick. I always forget these random little planets we go to. I've been to so many. Elitania. That's where we went to. So, um, Actually, did I ever show off the... No, I well, I showed you getting... Uh, killing the Pijacks. Yeah, we had to deal with Pijacks and get in the Lost Module, so I had to chase them down. Um, I don't know if I ever showed you... Actually, I guess I could do... Let me see. I think I should have a save before I went in there. Um, but you could actually get... Because uh, all I showed you was getting like infinite Paragon points or something like that for those who either play uh, um, you know, Renegade or for those who wanted to... Um, get both of those who had trouble getting paragon points for some reason you guys should just start shooting that was a little extreme, wasn't it? guess the little beast had it coming but the difference in this case is we keep um, let me shoot one first so I can... <laughs> Man, apparently I can't hit these things oh I guess you only get the renegade once okay never mind. I could swore there was a way to get like multiple renegade points from like killing the monkeys or whatever Oh well. Maybe I should have started out this episode showing off like um, what other characters say when you shoot them. Hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I could probably, maybe I'll tie that into the end of the episode or something like that. So, but yeah, now that we've uh, hacked our way to getting our Paragon points, you know, uh, to get this result, you have to have 90% Paragon if you've already unlocked the other morality quest. Uh, at 80 percent but to get the other one you have to get 90 percent instead of 80 because i guess it's trying to make up the difference or whatever and apparently we got enough charm to uh uh that we got above 75 so we got all the free extra points for charm so now i get store discounts now so yay that'll help with that even though i already have plenty of money anyway so yeah we'll use that point for assault rifles anywho actually i'll have to redo that again because i'm going to show something else off just to show you that you saw me do that one morality one, but if we go to Cadus or Cacus, whatever, um, I can show you it activating. But I'll show you something interesting as well um, when uh, when you talk to the Admiral. Actually, I don't know if I have to go there. I think maybe I just have to go to another system. I don't even know if I have to go to that planet specifically to get a call from Admiral Message Hackett. Yeah, we can, we've already heard this we've before, so. Um, so we gotta take care of this emergency situation. I'm busy. I'm sorry, Admiral. I've got too much going on right now to help. Damn it! I'm not asking you because it's convenient. Nobody else can get this done. I can't order you, but I'm asking you to reconsider. If you don't help, hundreds of innocent people are gonna die. And if I take time to help you, millions could die. I'm sorry. Understood, Commander. Fifth fleet out. <laughs> One of the few times that you could just straight up just tell Admiral Hackett to suck it. And you don't even say that in an aggressive way. You're just like, no, sorry, I gotta stop uh, Saren, even though I have plenty of time to do it. But yeah, it's like one of the few times you can tell the Alliance to screw off uh, and not accept a mission. All the other times you have to do it. So I don't, I kind of don't understand how the game works when it comes to like certain missions being acceptable or not. It, he even tells you that he isn't required to make you do it, yet you do it for all the other missions. So, let me, uh... Well, actually, I can just go to that planet at any time, so we can ignore that. I'll just do that off... Well, actually, I'll just do that off-screen, because I've already seen, uh, shown you, like, with Femship at the... I think it was at the end of that... Or, no, it was the beginning of another episode, where it shows what happens when you accidentally kill everyone uh, during it. So, all right, let's go and take care of the... That Strange Transmissions mission we got, like, a long time... Actually, let me... Show it off again for those who don't remember. This is what we got in um, uh, the CSEC offices uh, with the... Um, oh, I forgot his name. Now the guy who owned the office. Palak or whatever his name was. Oh, whoops. I don't know why I skipped past it. Uh, there's actually like four ways to get this mission. And they have different names depending on where you get it. Let me look it up again really quick. I have the notes down. Um, let's see... Um, you can hack Palin, that's it. Palin? Palin? I think it's Palin. But anyway, hacking his office gets the first result. Uh, second one is if you go to Pharos, there's a, um, a place you can go to. You can hack that to get this mission. Um, you can also get an Ovaria as well, which we already got it, so we never ran across the module that actually had it. Um, and then if we just go to the system itself, 
Admiral Hackett will give us a mission, which he's going to go into anyway, but it gives us a different result. But anyway, this one see, talks about the Bodic, <laughs> Bodic, Biotic Commune. Uh, but then if we actually go to the Sentry um, area, we'll uh, see. Go over there. He'll give us the. He'll give us a, a a more detailed version of the mission, like what we're supposed to be doing there. So it is kind of interesting that that there are certain ways you can certain ways that you get can get a mission and not have to do it the commander. obvious. Big surprise! The Alliance needs you again, Shepard. This is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. Major Kyle, your commanding officer, Torfin has set up a small compound at a Hawking Etta cluster. He's attracted a number of biotic followers. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, hmm. Shepard. Looks like uh, looks like an old commander. Yeah, if you uh, if you specifically choose the the ruthless um, personality, then um, this mission has a little bit more interest to you because this is your commander from the from the Battle of Torfan or Torfan or whatever, where you massacred a lot of people. But apparently you're your commanding officer didn't uh, didn't get off as well as you did. Well, actually, we don't know. I mean, the fact that we're ruthless and we're a paragon, maybe we didn't get off scot free. When you think about it, eh, maybe you're overacting, uh, Admiral. It's it's nothing. What kind of proof do you have that the major is dangerous? Three days ago, we sent two alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. Really, uh, that's how they always end up being. They always call themselves the uh, father. Wait, is this like Waco, Texas? Is this going to be the same result? Oh boy, I hope not. Well, in game probably, but realistically, like in real life, no, I wouldn't want to be like that. But uh, actually, no, because I think technically they, because in this case, I actually did kill the people in Waco, Texas. It was just a, a massive screw up. Well, at least from what I understand. I don't remember all the details about it, but... Anyway, Kyle's followers? You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched on to a group he identifies with. Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection, and they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. Hmm. I gotta help the poor, the poor man. Yeah, it's kind of weird how a, a guy who's you know, bi a powerful biotic, because usually in most stories, usually it is the biotic, who, the most powerful biotic gathers all these other biotics, but maybe the guy's just very charismatic. Who knows? People follow Charles Manson. Man Charles Manson. And have you seen that ugly son of a bitch? Uh, missing Alliance officers? What were those Alliance representatives going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring him back to an Alliance facility for treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years. We weren't going to abandon him. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers kill them. Huh. You know, they, they talk about, like, not leaving behind, which, I mean, I wish that were true, but there's quite a few governments or the military that'll just, like, leave a man behind. Why do you think it's so hard to, like, at least in my country, to get, like, funding for the veterans? Like, um... Not association. What is it called? The, it's basically you know where you, they help veterans after wars like get back into society and stuff like that. But yet they they always have a hard time conveniently not finding enough money to to give to veterans. You know for you know sacrificing themselves for our country or sacrificing pieces of themselves. Nope, you've done your job now. Scoot off. I forgot. There's really a lot of movies about the idea of like you know as soon as they come home they're you know people don't respect him or especially with vietnam that was terrible for a lot of vets like you know depending on how you like what side you look at but overall it's like we just went in a lot of people thought we were just killing all the locals there and then as soon as all the people came back all the people who were in vietnam were basically ostracized from their own country not just the government yeah it was pretty fucked up so anyway major kyle what else can you tell me about major kyle he's not the same man you served under he feels responsible for the Alliance soldiers who died at Torfin. His psych evaluation showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. 
No, it looks like it's too late. And basically, this is a classic, you know, classic PTSD situation, post traumatic stress disorder. Because um, yeah, just the combat and fighting and stuff like that happens quite often. It can happen to other people, but it seems to happen more often to people who've been in tense situations for a long period of time, usually military or policemen, stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what it's like, so I couldn't tell you of a personal idea about them, like what that's like. So uh, maybe I can reason with them. I'll look into this. You want me to? You want me to kill them? How permanent of a solution are you looking for? We don't want this to turn into a massacre, Commander. Kyle is dangerous. I trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. Oh, it is going to become a bloodbath. I mean, we are playing Renegades, for God's sake. So, all right, before we go on, I guess, I mean, I've read over the Tor Fan thing and every, or I've, you know, it gives you a brief idea of what the Tor Fan thing and everyone kept talking about, but I never actually read, showed you guys or read the codex that talks about my uh, personal history. That actually gives you a little bit more detail of what it's about. I mean, you don't have to read it, I guess, because people kind of references and it pretty much is obvious what happened there. But the game actually kind of gives you a basic rundown of if you actually go into the codex, which I forgot I was going to read off some codex entries every episode, and I almost forgot to do that again. Thanks for reminding me from the future. Uh, anyway, this is our we can actually read our profile here. So, you were born on Earth, but never knew your parents. Well, a child of the streets, you learned to live by your wits and guts, surviving in the hidden underbelly, the megatropolises of humanity's homeworld. Eager to find a better life, you joined the Alliance military when you came of age. You were assigned to the campaign to rid the Skillian Verge of Batarian slavers and other criminal elements. The final battle came when Alliance forces laid siege to Torfan, a slaver base built miles below the surface of a desolate moon. The superiority of the human fleet was wasted in the assault on the underground bunker, but you led a corps of gr elite ground troops into the heart of the enemy base. Nearly three quarters of your own squad perished in the vicious close quarters fighting, a cost you were willing to pay to make sure not a single slaver made out Torfin alive. And apparently, well, I said three quarters, okay. But yeah, Major Kyle's a part of that, so, you know, uh, I think each mission does have, like, a reference uh, character personality uh, based on what you chose. Not just the mission that you get from it, but there are certain missions that specifically mention that you're this. Like, and that, for, the, for those who choose Ruthless, uh, is the Major Kyle mission. They're not huge things, but, you know, I like the fact that there are some missions that maybe seem to be more important than the, the next person. So uh, let me read a, like one of these uh, FTL drive things and then we'll um, do, do it again next episode or something like that. New space travelers ask, oh, sorry, we're on shipping vehicles, fashion and life travel, a drive appearance. New space travelers ask, what does it look like outside a ship moving faster than light speed? Well, there's no windows, so part of the answer can be seen as simple painting, oh, or that. Light travels slower through glass than it does on the open air. Light also moves slower in conventional space than it does in high-speed mass effect fields. This, cause ref this causes refraction. Any light entering at an angle is bent and separated into a spectrum. Objects outside the ship will appear refracted. The greater the difference between the objective, exterior, and subjective, interior speeds of light, the greater the refraction. As the subjective speed of light is raised within the field, objects outside will appear to redshift eventually becoming visible only to radio telescope antennae. High-energy electromagnetic sources, sources normally hidden to the eye become visible in the high blue spectrum. As the speed of light continues to be raised, X-ray, gamma ray, and eventually cosmic ray sources become visible. Stars will be replaced by pulsars, the acceleration or accre accretion disks of black holes, quasars, and gamma ray bursts. Ooh, what's a quasar? Uh, to an outside observer, a ship within a blue effect drive Enveloped appears blue shifted. If within a field that allowed travel at twice the distance of light, speed of light, any radiation emits has twice the energy as normal. If the ship is in a field of about 200 times light speed, it radiates visible light as X rays and gamma rays. In the infrared heat from the hull is blue shifted up in the visible spectrum of higher. Damn it, Xbox Live! Ruining my video? Nah, it's fine, whatever. Shields, uh, shields. Ships moving faster than light speed are visible at great distances, though their signature will only propagate at the speed of light. You get that, folks? All right, then. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, right. We actually want to land on the planet. Okay. Oh, and actually check out the system. So, oh, uh, we're in the... Okay, I guess I should go over the... Before I read all that. So we're in the Hawking's Eta uh, area. I assume... I mean, I could be wrong, but I assume this is named after the, the physicist, or rest in peace, uh, Stephen Hawking. Was he a physicist? 
I just know he's a man in a wheelchair who's extremely smart, but, well, he was in a wheelchair, and then his body kind of slowly, I forgot what disease he had or condition, where his body basically kind of, like, he could, like, I, f I think he started, he could move around, but then he was forced to a wheelchair after a while, and then after a while, he couldn't even, like, speak properly without, like, a, a device or something like that, so, yeah, pretty, pretty heinous when you think about it, but I think it's named, it's assumed it was named after him, but I could be wrong. Um, let's see, uh, he was astro, yeah, astrophysicist and theor, uh, theor, theoretician. Um, mostly known, one of his big things, working with black holes. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, okay. Anyway, we're checking out the Kanktra mission here. Let's see if there's any random information about that I can show you while, while you read the little detail there. Um. Really, Mass Effect 2, you, this place becomes a bit more important, but that's it. At least not that I'm seeing here anyway. So anyway, let's survey this sucker. Light metal surveyed. While scanning the planet, you have detected a significant deposit of cobalt. Cobalt, your way out of this one. No, I don't know. Actually, I don't think there is any. Oh, no, there is a metallic asteroid. Okay. Actually, shouldn't that be enough to get, like, the... There it is. Shouldn't that be enough to get the heavy metals thing? That might be enough. Um, a metal-rich asteroid. While skating this asteroid field in the Hawking's Ada Cluster, you detected a large deposit of palladium. Or did I already get the... No, I think I already did get the roar, didn't I? <laughs> Man, I'm like forgetting like little details all the time these days. Clen... Clen Dagon? What is this from, like, Cthulhu or something? You know, the cult of Dagon? No? No one? Okay. Let's see... Uh, let's see. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Well, I'll talk about that when we drop on the... Uh... Oh, no, I guess you can see it from here. So, all right. Anyway, just show off the little details. Whoops. <laughs> Press the wrong button. Oh, and there's a... We got a ton of money. Um, let's see what we can look at now. Well, apparently, um, well, this is more important in the second game. So, but apparently, the uh, artwork, uh, the artwork from the surface on this, which I think is shown in the second game, because they do uh, surveying a bit differently. In the second game, it's supposed to actually be a real depiction of Mars, apparently. So that's kind of cool. Um, but that's it for that planet. Yeah, that, it doesn't really show it here because of the way we look at planets in this one. So, But in the second game, they do it differently, so you get a better idea of the surface of the, the planet. So, anyway, uh, Thar... Theropta? Theropta? Hmm. See what the, this one says, if there's any... Any random tidbits. Uh, apparently, the... Orbital distance on this uh, is actually incorrect, at least according to the trivia here. It's supposed to be by the Kepler's third law of planetary motion. It should be uh, 23.6 AU. At least that's what it says here. I don't know all the details on that. That's just what it says. So I'm believing the internet. <laughs> uh, medallion recovered. Well, scanning the planet, Thor, Thor Opto. You discovered a tiny moon with some odd readings. Further scans by Chief Engineer Adams revealed a, a destroyed escape pod. Your salvage team recovered the components and found a League of One medallion. A League of One? We are many. All right, what's uh, the other planet around here? Uh, Tamahera? Themyscira? Are we going to find hot, hot orange-looking girls with fiery red hair? No. No, we won't. But we can only dream. Uh, let's see, no, no, no things of interest here, so we can skip that. And then, okay. And let's go to the little moon. That's where we're actually supposed to go. To Pre Presrop, Presrop, Presrop. These nuts? No, sorry. I usually don't make crude jokes about like that, but yeah, every once in a while you gotta throw, you gotta throw it out there. And let's see. No, okay. I was just saying if there's any random information I should be. Aware of. Nope. Let us. Oh, right. Gotta show you the second half. Jagged ridges. It has a few dragon ridges on it. So, anyway, let's drop down. 
Um, for this mission, if you go aggressive, because you can do this mission completely without um, any combat. If you're going to go aggressive, obviously you need to bring people who who can take uh, botics and stuff like that. Um, because, well, like he said, they're all botic users. Although, weirdly enough, the weapons they use are mainly pistols. So they're going to be... If you go physical, they'll usually... Well, at least as far as I remember... Yeah, everyone has pistols. I'm just trying to remember if there's any like random people who might have more than that. No, they all have pistols because they're supposed to be adepts. So they... Well, I don't know if the game... I don't know if the game uses its own combat rules or anything like that. So, anyway, we'll just do... Uh, we'll just do Ashley and Kaiden. Why not? No reason. They don't have any... As far as I'm aware of, they don't have any dialogue that's pertinent to the mission, unfortunately. I know I didn't, like, off-screen do it with every single character to see if they have unique dialogue, but there are quite a few quests in this game where just characters just don't say anything, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I didn't do every single conversation variation. What I mean is if I choose all Renegade options for the most part, there's not going to be a character saying something. So, anyway, yeah, see how Strange Missions has now changed to Major Kyle. Kyle? As soon as we, uh, as soon as the Admiral told us, so... Major Kyle, your CEO during the Siege of Torfan, has amassed a small but fanatical group of Botic followers. He's already killed two Alliance officers, officials, sent to investigate their compound at Hawking's Ada Cluster. So now we just have to uh, go to the compound. And let's see, I think everyone else had to... Oh yeah, bad to level my guy up again. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I'll get you. Yeah, I'll get... Why don't you... Actually, I'll be leveling up your first aid, so... So let me uh, switch to let's just switch to throw then. Okay, and then before we fight, because we're playing. Uh, actually, I think I forgot to. I forgot to uh, take off the stuff from the um, from my other group, but that's fine. Um. Uh, see, do I have anything for? Oh. Uh, yeah. Physics threshold. Let's see. Yeah, we'll give you all physics thresholds for the purposes of the biotics when we actually get to it so okay and on this plant we've got a couple of encounters outside of the botic compound one is our favorite our favorite worm is a thresher moss it's gonna be right over there so let's take care of that now since we're closer and if we died for some reason we can just you know load up before we fight it but we fought this thing so many times we should be able to not die but you'd be surprised how many often I do like a, a game and I get so sediment in my ways that I accidentally get killed because I forget to pay attention. Because I am playing a hard difficulty, so this guy will, you know, can, like, crush you. So. I will crush you! Oh. Don't hit me with your goo! Don't hit me with the goo! Okay, you're ready. No, uh. Don't shoot your goo at me while not looking at me in the face. Why don't you look at me during... This guy's a rude, rude dude. Actually, I'm surprised that spit didn't just hit me because my the body of the vehicle was not close enough. Okay, let me step out of the vehicle to shoot his butt. Man, who knew that? Uh, who knew that Thresher Moss could drop a whole lot of money? We're not just doing this for the money. We're doing this for a shitload of money. Yeah, sorry, I've been uh, a little, a little aggressively cursy lately. Eh, every once in a while, I'll have like that phase. That's kind of one of the nice things about recording an M-rated game is that you can be a bit more crass than usual. I mean, at least my rules. I don't. There's no specific rules on how I have to do these. I I tend to follow. I tend to keep my language and mentality as appropriate to the game I'm playing. So if I'm playing like a, a game that's rated for E, then I usually tend to keep my um, mentality, attitude, and everything like that to that game. So that way if like some kid is uh, clicks on the video, I'm not giving him the wrong impression. Sure, I could do like whatever and not care what a kid thinks, and that's probably how I should do it. I don't know, I'm just, I'm getting in consideration. Like when I did my, um, uh, Oh, there's uh, some mercenaries. I think they're mercenaries. Yeah, I'm on the map here. There's random mercenaries attacking me. Ooh! Yeah, look at that. They're shooting missiles and everything. We're going to take you guys out to town. Around town. I think they're just standard mercenaries, so... Anti-tank mercenaries. Of course they're anti-tank. Uh, okay, let's... 
get everyone boosted up. I think it's mainly just human-ish like you know, it's like nothing too crazy, so um oh, yeah, I guess I could have hit him with a singularity a little bit. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love when a pan plan comes together. Dun 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 I wonder if anyone knows what that's from. Ah, you dampened me. Or, uh, sabotaged me, I mean. Sorry. Uh, I could just stasis you to get you out of the way for a second. Yeah, you guys attack him. Finish him off. Oops. Maybe it's a... There it is. I was about to say, I, for, I, I kept forgetting which direction I was supposed to click to have my companions target a specific character. I almost never do that, but you can have your allies target a specific character if you want. Is there, I don't think there was anything else here. I think it was just the mercenaries, just a way to get some extra experience. So, Okay, technically there was more things other than bot eggs, but you know what I mean. Okay. Let's, uh, ooh, what do we get? Any new equipment? We are getting to that point where we're going to start getting some pretty nice, uh, nice stuff that might actually be worth it. Uh, oh, did I not? Quit Kaiden with better armor? Huh. Must have gotten to do that. Well, you know. Yeah, now that we're starting to get to the nine equipment, um, we're going to start putting in some pretty good stuff here. All right, let's go to the first uh, uh, mineral deposit around here. Yeah, this one's one of those planets that if you're not paying attention, you could easily be trying to go up a steep hill, which, you know me, I've done that quite a few times. I'll have to make a note when I'm uh, uh, for viewers who are like trying to hear the behind the scenes stuff. Like when I was talking about like doing those pie jack things, I should have done that at the beginning of this episode, or maybe at the the different characters making different reactions to killing the, the monkeys. But I never actually did because I I forgot. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't write down my ideas very often, which I should. Which is weird because I do that when I do because I do have a notepad and stuff like that next to me. It's I suppose I. I use it for my writing concepts when I'm doing writing, um, uh, like, exercises and stuff like that. Like, when you're a writer, well, if you want to be an inspired writer, one of the few things is you should have, like, some way to keep, uh, sorry, we uh, survey some uranium. Um, one thing you're supposed to do is keep, like, notepads on you at all times because you'd be surprised how many good ideas you come up with and then you forget because of just heat of the moment. Um, I forgot the name. Of, there was uh, one guy who... Um, uh, should I just go to the bunker? Now it's, uh, let's take the long way, even though it's not efficient, so. Because I want to do the compound last. There was one guy, he was either a writer or a musician. I'll have to look this up later. I don't know if I'll add it in or not. But, uh, he, they say some, one of the biggest inspirations for writing is kind of that, like, um, like, REM sleep or whatever it is. Well, maybe it's not REM sleep specifically, but it's in that like vein of, of dream consciousness or whatever. And to try, he like um, he it would either put his hand in water or do something to wake him up at just the right time during during that sleep period to wake up so he could remember the dream. Like it was just enough of a jolt that he'd wake up and he'd be able to write it down. Or I'm trying to remember who it was. He was either a musician or a writer. And they would come with some really interesting lyrics and stuff like that because of that. Um, and that was a pretty interesting idea. Um, but the fact that I, apparently it's not that big of a deal because I've forgotten it. Who the name of the person is. But I'll have to, like I said, I'll have to look it up. Maybe I'll try to remember it for later. <laughs> I should write that down. And I'll probably forget about it. So, But uh, it'll give you a reason to look it up, at least. And I'll climb up this thing and get to it. That might be too steep. Let's see. I might be able to trick it. Just cervi uh, uh, cervical, or not cervical, um, cyclical. Cyclical lines, I tell you, damn it. At least if you can get to the top, it makes it a little bit easier to, to check everything. Yeah, what we're going to is a uh, um, little abandoned camp area. There should be some, I think there's some salvage here if I recall. <laughs> Just, uh, discovery. This cluster of prefab utility shacks have a distinct ramshackle look to them. A set of rover tracks lead away over the mountain ridge to the southwest. 
which uh, show, which is supposed to basically t tell us like where we're supposed to check the next thing. But I think the map already tells us where it is, which is this. I believe it's supposed to point us to this, or at least this area anyway. Um, if not there, the anomaly, but it's like it's supposed to be in the general area. But all right, let's see what's inside. Ooh, malfunctioning object. Uh, can I get this out? Nice. Oops. Didn't mean to talk to you. Ooh, combat optics. The, I think that's the best one. Combat exoskeleton. I think we haven't come across that version of the exoskeleton yet. Yeah, this was, this is the one that uh, doesn't have as much physical threshold, but it adds the hardening um, feet, which helps against uh, uh, botics and stuff like that. As well, not, it's kind of weird how it's not as good as exoskeleton when it comes to certain things, but it, it adds an extra layer. So, oh right, I've got a. Kaid's got a new. Uh, he's got seven armor, so now he has multiple um, uh, different um, uh, multiple slots now. Yeah, even armor gets multiple slots at, at a certain level. That might be one of the few reasons why you might want to buy armor if you don't want to wait for it to drop. Is uh, when you hit that certain level, you can start getting multiple uh, uh, equip. Uh, you can equip multiple uh, upgrades. Uh, Suckle off and explore eight. Probably not better than Ashley's outfit, but uh, you can always check. Let's see, no, not really, unfortunately. I mean, the only reason it may be equipped is because it has, like I said, it has a uh, two slots. Uh, the shield, I don't know. she does lose a bit of damage protection, though. Mm. I mean, in the grand scheme, it's probably better to have those bonuses than anything, but. Okay, well, anyway, let's go to the anomaly down there that the game point is towards. Okay, I don't think there's any more salvage. I mean, usually it's pretty obvious where you can salvage stuff in most areas of the game. Like, if there's a building, go inside, you know, that type of thing. If there's, like, a pod or something like that, check it out. I mean, you should always check it out anyway. Any good adventurer checks is everything, you know. Was it the, you know, the, the adventurer's mod creed is pick up anything that isn't nailed down? I think King Graham taught, taught me that one. Yeah, yeah. I need to. I really need to. I keep talking about this. I really need to find out like a good point to uh, do a King's Quest series at some point in my life because I really do. I just. I think. Th ah! I flipped over. Um, I think what was like stopping me for the longest time is I didn't really have a good way of recording from my computer because at the time you had to like buy specific programs, but now that I have like a. Uh, GE, like GE Force, uh, whoops, hopefully I can get out of this thing, or back in. Um, when I bought it, my GE, uh, like, graphics card or whatever, it actually came with a recording setup, like, in the card itself, so I didn't have to buy anything extra. It just came with it. Although I did spend a lot of money on this card, and I got really lucky. I bought this card, like, a year or two before, before apparently graphics cards are, like, gold now. Like, it's, Random. oops. Um, anyway, recover the artifact. Oops. Dang it. See, <laughs> luckily you can just recover it whenever you want. But, but yeah, like, nowadays, at least by the time it's recording, it's, like, really hard to get certain graphics cards. Like, they're ridiculously expensive because, I guess, because of the uh, the pandemic or whatever, that certain materials that need, were needed to make them were in short supply because they couldn't get easy access to them or something like that. So, anyway, digging under the beacon revealed a piece of scrap metal, luckily from a very old freighter. It was marked on the one side of Macedine, Macedon Outpost Insignia. And then there is something over here. Yeah, which I think that's what that salvage thing is supposed to be pointing to this wrecked mining vehicle is where it's supposed to be pointing to. It's Discovery. The front of the rover is crumpled in f from impact. A glance inside tells you the occupants probably a team of illegal... Wildcat miners are dead. Debris is still sliding down the furrows left by its tires, silent in the near vacuum atmosphere. That's pretty much it. Like, no big thing, just uh, people mining illegally and they suffered the effects of travel on a planet. They didn't have a Mako that can basically survive anything, apparently. So, there, let's grab that debris that's over there. Let's see, is that. Yeah, it's probably going to be annoying either way, but. but yeah, anyway, the graphics card comes with a recording program into it, so. All I had to do is press a button, and boom, there you go. It's actually pretty It's pretty sweet, actually. As far as I know, it doesn't look bad. I've done a few programs with it already. like, uh, Or I, I've also used it to record some old games as well. Um, obviously, it can only look so good as the game play itself, but uh, 
Um, obviously, I haven't turned it up to its maximum setting because I only have so much memory on my well, I have a decent amount of memory on my computer, but the problem is, is I hold a lot of files for editing, and I have to keep back uh, to keep backups for at least for a while until I'm guaranteed sure I don't need them anymore. Although that strategy hasn't really worked officially because of uh, oh, what's that? What's just saying? Because when I found out when I needed to keep the files, I didn't even really utilize it anyway. But still, I keep them anyway. Just ooh, Kai explosive, the one the the one shot, the one shot thing. Ooh, a snow blind rounds. I don't think I've talked about those. I think those are, if I remember correctly, those are an upgrade to the. Um... Oh right, we finally got the uh, yeah. Some nine assault rifles can now get you three slots too, outside of the um, Spectre gear. Um, yeah, I think they're yeah they're similar to the cryo rounds. That's basically the. Uh, eight, eight, and nine step for that. So, hey, let's go and give her the. Uh, yeah, let's give her that too. Since you're my end all be all girl, I don't think I need any. I don't really have to give you that because you're not going to utilize it. You're supposed to be using the pistol anyway. But I'll equip it by myself anyway. So, do I have any new. Eh, nothing new there, so... Always nothing I'm worried about over... Didn't I... No, I think I talked about it in a previous episode, buying, like, a really good Omni gear for Tali, and I mentioned buying it. Um, okay. Now we can go to the Biotic Compound, so... Biotic Compound. Am I just... Is it just me, or am I slurring my words recently? Do I have a brain aneurysm, and I'm not aware of it? That would kind of suck. Like, having something... Your brain being all like some well, actually that is my biggest fear about just stuff happening to your brain, you know, Alzheimer's and all that, which will probably happen. I won't be surprised. I'm afraid of it. And then here we go, like I end up getting that condition, either Alzheimer's or or uh, or something like that. I don't know. Now well, crossing our finger. Well, I mean, we'll all lose. You know, we'll all lose our memory eventually. It's just the idea of a certain disease or condition just either aggressively doing it or to the point where you don't even remember people anymore. Oh yeah, there's another um, uh, mining spot around here. But yeah, this is the compound for it. Where we need to go is in this little thing over here, but we can't access that right now until we uh, go into the first major area of this place. Because there's a... It, there, they'll either... Well, there's a couple of ways you can solve this mission. Like I said, you could solve it with violence, which we're most likely going to do, or non-violence. Which really, the only major effect is that the mission only has basically two... Um, anyway, there's a, a thing of gold there. Um, when it comes to like how the mission ends, there's only two ways the mission ends. It's either you saved a lot of lives, or everyone, or, things, or you massacre everyone. So... And the way this mission is weird, because you can basically kill everyone in this, except as long as you kill everyone and not Major Kyle, then you'll get the, ah, uh, you saved a lot of lives <laughs> mission. Or if you kill everyone, then you get the, it was a massacre, So, which is obvious, but no, technically I didn't need to grab those, save them for later, so. But uh, let me show you a neat little trick here. Um, it's not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, mainly because... Um, <clears throat> It's not worth it to do this over and over and over again, but I'll show you, so... Anyway, let's go into the compound. We need to talk to your boss. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. Uh, I'm not an... Well, I guess I am, so... So basically, if you say, I can't keep me out, um, they basically said, well, you can try, and then you have to decrypt your way into the place, so... I have to see Magic Hal. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. So, the way you can do this mission... Man, I'm really dragging out this episode, really. I should have already been done with this and on to Pharos by now. Um, if you just want to straight... Like, this is the easiest way to get through this. If you're the Ruthless and you're trying to almost do more of a Paragon route anyway, you can just say, I served a Torfan, and that'll basically allow you to get to Kyle, so... My name is Commander Shepard. Major Kyle knows me. I have to speak to him. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Hey, Kakashi's voice actor again. Um, okay, so that's one way to just straight up go inside and 
and you can just go oh i didn't show but the comp that little like little little uh stand out like we said that building or whatever on the far side of the compound oh uh over there that's that turns green as soon as they say oh okay they'll let you go check them out now let's uh let's 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 just uh, threaten them one way or another i'll find a way in father kyle told us that the alliance wouldn't let us live in peace this is your last warning. Go away, or we will defend ourselves. Father Kyle told us that the alliance. And for some reason, it repeats the line again when you do that. But anyway, um, so uh, if you override ourselves. this, obviously, I'm gonna just do zombie jail because I'm gonna just reload. But so you get some experience for doing that, and you obviously you can go inside. Now here's a little cool little trick. I don't know if they repair if they fix this in the legendary edition or not. And yeah, everyone's aggressive. Um, but if you leave, um, something interesting happens. I don't know if it's because of the coding or something like that. But if we try to enter again, we have to manually override again. So if we do that, which unfortunately is kind of, a, it's really long. I don't know. It might depend on when you go here. If you come, yeah. The door is mostly hacked. Yeah, you get experience again. And if you go inside and uh, back outside again. Yeah, I know this is a bit tedious, but I want to show this off. So... Um, and it doesn't let me do the Omni Gel thing because it costs 100, and now I've already I have less than 100 now, so we can hack it again. But yeah, I don't remember if the hacking gets more difficult if it's based off levels or not. I don't think so because there've been some areas I could always. And yeah, you could just get a ter a permanent like a, a array of experience. You could do the over and over and over again until you feel it's worth it. However, you only get 100 experience every time you do that. That's a little asinine to do, just sitting there for an hour, getting like a higher experience when you could just play the game again or or something just to get all that experience. So that's an idea. If you want to do it, great. But uh, let me show you how you're supposed to actually get in here normally if you're just trying to uh, convince people. Sanctuary. I need to talk to the so just ignore the I served with the Torah fan. So. You shouldn't have killed those investigators. This problem isn't going to go away. We won't let you take Father Kyle away. He protects us. We need him. And then you could go ahead and still say, I start with a Tor fan, but yeah, I apparently got enough charm now to say he needs my help, but, um, or he'll get you all killed. He's leading you to your deaths. If you fight the Alliance, you'll all get slaughtered. I'm your last chance. Let me talk to him or people start dying. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. Yeah, see, there's the... He'll meet you there. Yeah, he says the same thing. So, yeah, see, now it's green. Uh, now, if for some reason you did that, and you're... Oh, the one reason you might want to do the Paragon or Renegade Persuasion is because you get some points for doing that. You do lose out on experience, sort of. But, uh, oh, yeah, there's something over... Well, I'll grab it when I actually do the official thing. Um, but now... But you can actually... Yeah, see them walking around. You can talk to them. We can't trust the alliance. Um, they have a couple lines of dialogue if you don't kill them. Uh, they, as far as I remember, they repeat. So. Yeah, you can see how most of them only have pistols in their hands. Although they're not, you can tell that the pistols aren't set properly in the hands. It's kind of floating in there. Nobody cares about us, biotics. We have to look out for each other. I'm kind of surprised Kyle didn't have anything to say during this whole mission. Father Kyle says we biotics have to. We can't trust the alliance. Yeah, I think they keep. Father. Yes, yeah, so together. Father Kyle says other humans are scared of us because they know we're better than them. Father Kyle. Father Kyle. Father Kyle. Actually, how many different? Human... Uh, Father Kyle. Oh, okay. Says other well, anyway, uh, but if you change your mind or you whatever, you can actually uh, target them for. Let's see if I can actually find one now. Yeah, now we can actually kill them. Uh, when you do that, it, it immediately sets them into... Uh, it immediately sets this and um, the other compound into attack mode. So they immediately know you're hostile. There is a way to get pretty far into the into the area without... Um, pretty uh, far into the compound without fighting anyone. But if you do that, you do run the risk of losing out you some experience, die. mainly because of... I should have activated this so early. I don't know why I activated it when I did. And because they're all biotics, they're slightly resistant to... Um, 
robotics, but uh, I got pretty lucky with it. Well, lucky as if I'm about to die or something like that. <laughs> I just love tossing people. Rag dolls. Where's the other two around here? You must die. Oops. I must die. But if you um, you can actually get two major Kyle, and you could make some choices that'll. Um, Oops, maybe I should have gone upstairs to. Because now I'm going to take forever to get through this. You can actually get to Major Carl, do the convincing of not fighting, but you can still kill some people. But you can only kill people in, like, one area of the compound. There's two, Well, there's two parts. There's this one, and then there's the other compound where we're supposed to go to talk to Kyle. But, yeah, if you, if you get Kyle, um, if you capture Kyle, whatever, which is your main obje one of your objectives to do, um, you can still go back to an old area and kill the people who live in the compound. But the other comp, but the other compound, the one you don't kill, they'll become friendly and you won't be able to kill them. Like you can't manually attack. Well, you could manually attack them, but they never get to the point of aggressiveness to get experience from. If that makes sense, um, I think it's this. I think yeah, it's this room. I believe if you for some reason didn't convince them to open the door, um, you would have to um, unlock it. Well, oh, it's not this room. It's downstairs. But you'd have to unlock the the bunker basically is what you have to do that's why you go in here in the first place um it, unless you convince them then you bypass it and you just go to the next section of the area uh of the of the mission or whatever but uh yeah if you need the experience although you can um you can still convince them and still go in and shoot them and still get the morality for it uh, like i said the only difference in this actual mission is if if major uh, uh, ooh, chameleon tool, nice. Of course, after I buy it, but of course the Omni tool I bought for Tali is still the best. Well, the number is not the best tool, but ooh, lancer and a predator. We'll see if that's better. Probably not, but let's see how. Oh yeah, I don't have a. Did I give a? Let's see which Omni tool. Oh yeah, yeah, the Nexus. Oh, well, that's sad. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping that'd be really nice now that I finally got one. Without having to buy it. But yeah, the Savant, as far as I'm aware, is still the best uh, uh, Omni tool in the game. Same as uh, the Titan Armor for Krogan. Although I think Titan Armor for humans is also the best, too, if I'm, at least for heavy armor, anyways, recalled. Um, which I think is actually weirdly. I think that's the next step of. Wait, no, never mind. I was going to say something incorrect. Never mind. I think that's it. Let's see if there's any more treasure. Huh. Okay, and then there's that other treasure back. I don't know why I didn't grab it. I was thinking of something else when I said I'd hold off on grabbing it, but anyway, let's grab this. Maybe we'll get lucky and see what it drops. Ah, uh, last time I did this, I got a really good suit of armor, and I almost wish I'd kept that save. Um, it was actually one of, the, one of the best armors you could get at the time, <laughs> but I got unlucky. Yeah, that's the problem with having randomization like that. Is that uh? Oh, that probably is a better, the best Turian armor for him, because look at those stats. Oh, no, actually, no, the Colossus is better. Sorry, I hit the mic again. Dang it, it's all for Garrus, not for me. What about Shepard? You know, what about Shepard? Yeah, I should have kept that save. Dang it, that armor, piece of armor was really good. Oh, well. It's not like I'm playing in Sandy mode, so. If I was playing in Sandy mode, I probably would have kept the save and just said, hey, I'm going to load this after I, I get this random drop. Although, we'll probably end up getting the armor either from buying it or dropping it anyway, so. Yeah, if, if I was playing a harder difficulty, I'd probably be a bit more pissed. But since I'm playing veteran, it's not so bad. Mainly because I bought that Shepherd or that uh, Spectre gear so early, as early as you can, anyway. So yeah, everyone's aggressive. If not, they just walk around and tell you about how by how uh, the Alliance sucks and all this other stuff. Yeah, you know, how they want Major Cobb killed. Although these guys seem to be easier than the ones in the compound for some reason. Actually, maybe I've activated barrier a little too early. Because those guys are in the very front are easy, but uh... and I'll have to make a another save. I'll probably just save over that old file since if for some reason the recording entity or recording setup fails, I would have to redo that one thing. Oops, I'm not trying to talk to you. Even though I bought the, even though I put the 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 heavy whatever. Um, the threshold thing. I'm still getting knocked over every other time. 
Well, it, it does. It, the armor, the armor upgrade never completely gets rid of the chance of being knocked over. It just raises the chance of you avoiding the da avoiding it knocking you down. That's all. And luckily, the game never gives you the never. I think if an enemy has lift or something like that, it does the exact same thing. All it does is ragdolls you, because. You know how crazy the game would be if, if the game enemy could actually lift you just like you could? God, how many times I bet they I bet they thought about that when they first made the game. I bet they considered giving the enemies lift too in in the way that we as the player use it, but uh yeah, that would be chaotic and uh, how how many players would love to have their character not be playable for like a few seconds as you're flying in the air? Or the chance you might fall into a spot in a level that you can't that you couldn't get away from, like it might insta kill you, stuff like that. You know, kind of like during the Matriarch Benezia fight where you could possibly, um, let's see, eh, nothing really that great. Um, during the Matriarch Benezia fight where there was a possibility of like being ragdolled through the floor, um, or sorry, off the rails and dying. I'm kind of sad I never, I never showed go, that go, off, go. unfortunately. Whoa, what the? Where'd you come from? Okay. Go, go, go. Oops. Probably not gonna be. Oh, it worked. You're supposed to be resistant to that, but okay. Well, resistant doesn't mean immune. I think only bosses can't be. Um, or certain boss characters can't be um, ragdolled like that. Kind of like you. They give. They basically give you um, player immunity for the most part. I don't know if it'll let me save because technically, as soon as I open that door, it goes into a cutscene um, where we interact with Kyle. The combat frictionless material. If I remember, that one's supposed to be pretty good. The frictionless material. Let's see. Oh yeah, it is. Cause yeah. <laughs> I, I remember. I think I figured out the last episode. I was like, yeah, it's awesome. And then, then I'm like, is that good? Or, then the next. Uh, yeah, it's almost like you're watching an Alzheimer's patient or something like that. Where I just. Well, okay. That's actually worse than what I'm doing. I'm just being forgetful. It probably won't let me save it. Yeah, it won't let me save it because they're technically encounters. I want to save it because the in, uh, the fight with, or the encounters with Kyle can basically go with two ways. Obviously, one you kill him or one you convince him. So, let me see if I can run far enough away to save it. Just so I can show you both uh, both options. Yeah, I was kind of, uh, I was weirdly kind of hoping we would, uh, no, but I'm not far away. I might have to leave the compound maybe. Usually, if you get far enough away from an encounter, you can save it. You know, kind of like during the when we were doing the rogue AI, I showed you. I think I kept that save. I kept that file, or not file. I kept that a uh, gameplay. I think so. Man. Anyway. So anyway, yeah. There's two ways. Obviously, the obvious way is to either either convince him to leave or kill him. But uh, I wanted to show you what happens if you. Um, save him first and then kill him well which one do i want to keep because basically if you kill him you get the you get a pretty um uh, you get some interesting dialogue from Admiral hackett you know i'll do the i'll 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 save him because really killing him major kyle or kyle does not have a boss encounter because he's just a regular dude so he gets taken out pretty much well i'll show you what happens soon but um The butcher of Torfen. Why have you come here, Shepard? Why can't you leave us alone? Uh, if you're not ruthless, he doesn't say that at all. It's just I I know you, Shepard, or something like that. But the butcher of Torfan or Torfan, uh, even though the game tells me, I keep anyway. It's not an option. You brought this on yourself. I'm not here to talk. Where are the investigators, scum? What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. Um, I don't want to kill you. You'll pay for your crimes. Enough crazy talk. How about you then? Um, safe? They're not safe. The Alliance sent me to bring you in, Major. Can't you see this has gotten out of hand? Don't you understand you're endangering your followers? I respect that you have come under a banner of peace, but I cannot do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. So I'll show you, like, uh, th obviously, this, this you're supposed to get to this point so you can, 
you need to convince them. If you do the right tree, uh, you basically go into hostile territory. So um, if you say I try to help you, I believe you get um, you get plus two Paragon points for choosing that. Um, and I think, let me look it up again. There's some minor variations on like certain dialogue choices. Uh, let's see. Um if you choose the I can't if you choose the you can't help them now you get uh which requires a charm skill of seven by the way um you get eight paragon points for that uh, if you go I try to help you you get two paragon points and everyone goes hostile if you choose um you'll pay for your crimes you get no points because it's a neutral option and everyone goes hostile if you choose enough crazy talk you get two renegade points and everyone goes hostile and then if you choose surrender or die uh you get eight or you get a nine renegade points now on this one this one has a variation apparently from what i've been told if you choose this option without killing anyone to get to here then it requires a intimidate skill of eight but if you killed everyone to get here then it requires 10 apparently because i guess because it's hard to intimidate when you know that you pretty much are, are going all insane on you so if you don't come with me all your followers will end up dead what kind of father lets his children die? No, this, this was my fault. My children are innocent, pure. Please, I never meant for this to happen. I, I'm sorry. Well, too bad. People died. Well, I mean, your people died when I just straight up murdered them, but you killed those two Alliance officers. No one needs to pay. I know this isn't easy. Let's go. Sorry it's not enough. I don't want an apology. You have to come with me, Major. Wait, if my children see you taking me away, they won't understand. They will attack, and you will be forced to kill them all. You have shown me the error of my ways, Commander. Now you must give me time to explain it to them. It is the only way they will understand. Please, give me one hour. After that, I will meet the Alliance authorities at the gates of my compound and surrender without violence. I give you my word. You really wanted me to believe you, like... After everything you've done, and then, yeah, I convince you, and I'm a pretty good convincer, but you'll just consolidate your power. I believe you. I'm not sure I trust you. Forget it. I'm not letting you out of my sight, Major. I must do everything I can to keep any more of my children from suffering. This is the only solution. No. No, it isn't the only solution. You're just being, uh, er, er, you're just being stubborn. I believe you. I don't have much choice. No. We do this my way, Major. Now move up. I speak, but you do not hear. You are like the others. A blasphemer who must die. Yeah, he's not a boss. He just straight up kills him. Now, the, diff the, the annoying thing about this fight is that if you choose that option, it immediately equips you with a pistol because you used it to kill him. And so combat now assumes you have a pistol. So if you're playing a class that, like, or if you're playing a person that didn't give you any good pistols, you'll have whatever pistol you're equipped with. So if you haven't been paying attention, you might have a really weak missile uh, pistol on hand, especially if you're playing a soldier who's using an assault rifle. And if you're playing like a harder difficulty, you all of a sudden have your weakest weapon against... Uh, I think one of these guys does have a rocket launcher now that I think about it. Luckily, we're only playing on assault mode, so... Yep, see? Or they both have one, okay. Yeah, all the have pistols except for these guys who have assault rifles. But yeah, they, you can... Um, let's see if I lift you. No, oh, I did. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, that can be kind of a... That's kind of one of the few dickish things this game does to you uh, in that rare moment. Um... Is that you're being biotics? You sure don't. You guys sure don't have a very good protection against it. So, but that, that's it for Kyle. So, yeah, yeah, he's definitely not a boss because yeah, you just shoot him to kill him. So, uh, let's see what the journal entry says on that. Major Kyle, um, Major Kyle couldn't be reasoned with. The only thing left to do is return to the Normandy and file the report. Yep, he died. So yeah, let me show you what Hackett says after you kill him, and then we'll do the. Then we'll do the saving one because really I can still get the experience from those people despite um, uh, saving Kyle or whatever just because uh, because of because uh, he says to let them uh, he says to give him an hour but you can still uh, if you wait long enough uh, either in this area or this or the next area they become aggressive if you wait too long and since I already killed the first people in the first area uh, I don't have to worry about the other group becoming immune. Or becoming friendly to where you can't aggressive it and get them aggressive anymore. So, 
yeah, a lot of little ways to get the get the ending I require, despite uh, despite realistically it shouldn't work like that. So, oh yeah, I forgot to part the should part the car closer. Too bad you too bad you can't like call the car closer to you like a like a dog or something like that. Arf arf. Why should I never I never I think you always have to go to the vehicle to to get to the norm. I never actually tried pressing X while walking on the or maybe I have and I just forgot about it. But anyway, yeah, let's show off the uh, talking to the admiral. Message coming in. Patching it through. Admiral Hackett here, Commander. Your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Kyle. We never like to see civilian casualties, but I think we all knew how this was going to end. You did what you had to do. The news vans are going to pick up this story for sure, but we'll keep your name out of it, Shepard. Heck it out. And I think uh, I think there is a news report about about um, uh, about uh, about the event. Uh, if you go back to the Citadel, uh, and the journal completes. I think it just completed as is. I think if I recall. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we got this one a while back, so it's down on the. Uh, down to the bottom here because we got so early <laughs> yeah uh yeah major carl and his followers are dead a grim but not expected ending not not with our character anyway so all right let's do let's do this again but show off saving kyle and somehow saving a lot of people despite the fact that uh we killed everyone anyway but the game still as long as major kyle survives apparently we're not the monsters we think we are but yeah i'm still surprised that despite um you know, with the history of uh, Kaiden and everything, you think he'd be have something to say about this mission. But I guess the idea is maybe it's supposed to be Shepard's mission, at least when it comes to the ruthless. Uh, if you choose the ruthless uh, personality, but even then, I think I think a character sh or one of the char uh, one of your allies should have said something. You know, like oh god, or maybe they just see it as another mission because you're the commander. You know, they uh, you know they hop to and all that. But uh, even a uh, like Rex or Garrus or Tali or anything like that don't say anything about it, so... Oh, well, it's not that big of a deal, just... You know. But yeah, in this case, we want to, uh... Um... I did what I could. I respect that you have come... We want to actually let him, uh... Please. Yeah, we'll do that again, but, uh... I must do everything I can to keep any more... Okay, I believe you. This is the only solution. I'm going to trust you. If you betray that trust, you and all your children will suffer. I will not betray you, Commander. Thank you for this. Joker can have the Fifth Fleet pick Major Kyle up. I just hope you know what you're doing, Commander. Okay, someone says something when you actually do the mission. Sorry. You should return to the Normandy and notify the Alliance of Kyle's Surrender. They will want to dispatch a ship to take him into custody. Maybe Kyle also sees him as being more of a terrorist. That's why he's not truly sympathetic to him. Despite him being a you know, like a, it's your typical, like, PTSD soldier, couldn't handle it, so he goes a bit, a bit, uh, crazy. Oh, where the other, uh, huh. Okay, maybe they just immediately disappear, so, okay, well, never mind then. I thought there was a way to, like, kill those two people as well. Oh, there they are. They just moved into a different room. Yeah, so you can't actually shoot them to attack them because of that but if I remember correctly if I wait to I did this before in a previous test run so I should be able to get it again but the idea is if you wait too long they'll uh, they'll uh, become aggressive again unless I unless it's because I already destroyed the people from the first uh, area because when I did this I hadn't destroyed uh, the people from the first area yet so maybe that's why because they're supposed to be him and the one woman that I saw earlier, but I wonder where she ran off to. Well, if I do lose a bit of experience, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, there's the other. Man, you guys really get all over the place. I wonder if I can. Uh... You must die. Oh. Yeah, I'm a, maybe from I'm a, I might have made him immune maybe by defeating the people from the first area first. Okay, maybe I miss uh maybe I miscalled it, folks. Oh well, I could swear I uh, I did this before, but maybe I'm misremembering. But yeah, that's a one way to make him antagonistic by throwing bombs at him. But the thing is, it doesn't actually do anything because they're like I said they're immune after a certain point. 
Oh well. Okay. Well, let me show you what happens when we save Kyle. Then, if not, I'll probably do the kill him in the end. Then, just because uh, you get more experience from killing everyone in the group. Yeah, I guess not. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. See how the game like immediately stops targeting people when you do that. So. Father. Okay, well, never mind that. I guess I couldn't get them aggro. Because when I did it before, when I hadn't killed the other group, they eventually went aggro on me when I waited too long. But it's not happening this time. And most of the people are dead anyway, so... But I do lose a little bit of experience for doing that. Alright, but anyway, let's show... Uh, let's show Major Kyle being saved. And uh, get our, well, we don't get more of a reward, we just get the idea. Okay, yeah, pressing X and, and when you walk around just uh, has you pull out your weapon. So you have to press X in um, the Mako to teleport back to the Normandy. So. See, we're learning new things. Well, I should have already known that, but I wasn't I wasn't really thinking properly when I said, like, I wonder what happens if you press X. I'm like, well, you pull out your weapon, dork. <laughs> uh, anyway. I did a good job, Admiral. Not everyone died. Message coming in. Patching it through. Admiral Hackett here, Commander. Your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Kyle. We sent in a team as you instructed. Kyle's followers have disbanded, and the Major surrendered to us without incident. We'll make sure he gets the help he needs. To be honest, Shepard, I thought this thing was going to end in a bloodbath. I don't know how you did it, but you saved a lot of lives. Congratulations. Saved a lot of lives. Uh, I killed everyone except for three people, dude. Ah, that's just a game mechanic, unfortunately. It's like, it's way too many flags to detail for that. So I'm fine with that result, really. That's not that big of a deal to me. Um, okay. And there's a difference in description when you, when you finish it. So when you do that. Um, you managed to convince Major Kyle to surrender peacefully. He now faces a military tribunal, but you saved many lives, including his, your actions. But yeah, we're not going to keep that because that means, we're not going to keep that in any because it, it means I didn't get all the experience I could from it. So, but in an alternate reality, we thought better, or we thought better of ourselves for a, but a brief moment. And you still get the renegade points because you intimidated him to do it instead of just being peaceful about it. So, all right. Well, anyway. In the next episode of Mass Effect, we'll finally, finally, well, it wasn't that many episodes between Noveri and this one, because I think I went through these a little bit more quicker. But in the next episode of Mass Effect, we'll finally go to Pharos and deal with the colony there and see what they've been having to, uh, to deal with. Hopefully it won't be anything too crazy. Just some simple geth. Nothing has to do with, like, you know, something Message biological, command. you know. Patching it through. Commander. I'm glad you're in the area. We've got an emergency situation, and you're the only one I can trust. To oh, it's that one mission again. I already showed you in the last episode, so um, I already showed what happens when you uh, um, tell them no. So we'll leave it there, folks. And uh, actually, maybe I'll, I, I might begin the next episode after I end up murdering everyone in that compound <laughs> again purposely. It's actually. It actually can be kind of tough to actually kill every single scientist in there because sometimes your allies, depending on how you set them, might kill everyone before you even get to all the scientists. So you might get the middle of the road solution on that one. So but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of some people off screen. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. How can I help Admiral? Bionic fanatics have hit a medical research state. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. I'll take the biotics down, Admiral. And I'll try to limit the casualties. I know you will, Commander. I'm sending you the station coordinates now. Fifth lead out.